Hello, heroes of Arcasia. It's Henry back with another episode of Patch Notes with Henry. Today we're going to cover the Darkness Unleashed update, which is all about the Thamine Legion raid. We have a bunch of other stuff in the update too, but Thamine, the biggest and baddest Legion commander, has finally arrived, so that is going to be a big focus of the update. Both the Legion raid and some of the systems that come along with Thamine uh, accompanying and supporting that raid as well. So. Uh, let's dive right in to Thamine, since I know that's what most people are probably most excited for in the patch. Um, start off with a little lore intro and talk about uh, Thamine as a whole. Obviously, we've been kind of building towards this over the past few months. We've had some in-game story beats that hint at Thamine's coming. We have uh, the Thamine prologue that released about two weeks ago uh, as a big part of that. Um, but he is finally here. So let's kick off the uh, Thamine discussion with a little bit of a lore intro. So Thamine, the Legion Commander of Darkness, has finally appeared under the red sky. Despite the efforts of adventurers to fend off demons in Lutera, the allied forces failed to stop Thamine from summoning his fortress, the Dark Baratron. Thamine created this area under the red moon and has now disappeared into the Dark Baratron. He's seated on his throne of despair and is observing and preparing as the Dark Baratron and he begins to impact Arcasia. Under the influence of the Dark Baratron that unravels order and disperses darkness, Lutera is being reshaped, beginning to resemble the chaos of Petrania. So it's time to venture into the Dark Baratron and take Thamine on. You're gonna be able to challenge this Legion raid uh, even without completing some of the lore and the prologue quests, you're gonna be able to just hop in and go to battle in this new eight player Legion raid. Um, it's gonna have two modes to kick things off. We're gonna have normal mode coming in at item level 1610 or higher. And then hard mode is gonna be item level 1630 or higher. Unlike some of the previous Legion raids, the Thamine Legion raid does not have any special kind of learner difficulties. Um, but there is a special harder difficulty that we'll talk about in a little bit, which is the Thamine the First difficulty. For the main Legion raid, uh, it's gonna have three gates in normal mode, and then a fourth gate is actually added in hard mode. It's only available in that mode. Um, to challenge the hard difficulty gate four, players are gonna have to clear hard difficulty gate three to get there. Um, but, but then after clearing hard difficulty gate three for the first time, you're gonna be able to challenge uh, that special gate four even if you clear normal mode later on. You just need to show that you can make it to gate four in hard mode first, and then from there you can do kind of the mixing and matching of gates that you can on other Legion raids. Um, the entry attempts for normal difficulty and hard difficulty gates one to three are reset every week, just like a normal Legion raid. And then the clear opportunities for hard gate four are reset every two weeks, kind of similar to Brill Shaza gate four as well. It's a really epic and impactful fight, but because of that, it is, you know, kind of long. It's a slugfest against the most powerful Legion commander in the game. So the rewards from that are gonna be huge, but you're only gonna be able to do it once every two weeks um, to kind of, you know, not get fatigued and having to feel like you have to clear it every week to get all of the rewards. Um, alongside gold, honing materials, and all the normal stuff you get from Legion Raids, the uh, Thamine Legion Raid is also going to give a new material for Transcendence. Um, there's going to be two materials you're going to get, Dark Fire and Magic Spring Water. We're going to talk about Transcendence a little bit pretty soon. Uh, but just wanted to note while we're still talking through Thamine that that's going to be a new reward that you're going to get from the raid. Um, alongside that, there's a ton of new rewards like titles, achievements, mounts, emote packs, and a ton more that's all been added alongside Thamine as well. All right, so uh, a few seconds ago, I mentioned the special Thamine, the first difficulty. Uh, I'm going to talk through that really quickly. It's a special race to clear the original and hardest difficulty of the Thamine Legion Raid. Uh, when it came out in Korea, this was the original difficulty. Um, it's a very challenging, really epic version of the fight. Um, but with more challenge comes more rewards. So there's gonna be some really fun things that players are able to earn in that version of the raid. 
a uh, lot of prestigious rewards planned for those who can vanquish Thamine in his most powerful form. The race is going to begin on April 20th, so three days after the update at 10 a.m. Pacific time, which is 5 p.m. UTC, and it opens uh, across all regions at the exact same time, so players can kind of race and uh, challenge and try and get on our leaderboards uh, as soon as it drops. Um, we have a full detailed article with a ton of the information you need to know if you want to compete in that. It has all the reward details, conditions for entry, and other things that you'll need to kind of read through if you want to race for the leaderboards and earn all of the prestige that comes with clearing that super hard version of the raid. Uh, so just wanted to plug that. The link's going to be in the written release notes if you're already on the website. So you can navigate there, find all the, the rules and other details that you're going to need to know. So one final note on Thamine before we start diving into the Transcendent system. For players that have followed Thamine's release in the other regions of Lost Ark, Thamine Normal and Hard Difficulties will release with the most recent balance changes. We're not going to talk through those balance changes because all of it is new to the West, so it isn't really a balance change for the West that we would need to talk through. But just for players that are you know, kind of aware and up to speed on that kind of thing, just want to let you know that that's the version of Thamine that we're going to be receiving. Thamine the first, however, will not have any of those balance changes implemented, and it's retaining its super difficult status for that you know, big race and big competition. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Transcendence. Transcendence is a new system in which players can reinforce and improve their gear's basic effects by using ancient power sealed within ruins. This is going to manifest through increased damage, defense, and special abilities for both DPS and support playstyles. So the crafting materials are going to be Dark Fire and Ancient Soundstone, um, and those can be acquired, as we mentioned, from the Legion Raid, uh, from the Thamite Legion Raid. So the way that you progress through the Transcendent system is by, you know, as we mentioned, just kind of clearing out these ancient ruins to unseal their power and then imbue that power into your gear. This is going to happen through a new mini game that's been added. And, you know, there's a lot of nuance to the system. It's going to be hard for me to just kind of talk through it in a very express way. So we wanted to give you kind of a snippet of what you'll experience. If you want to read a full kind of what you can expect, you should check out the written section of the release notes. But honestly, the best advice I can give you at this point, if you're trying to maximize value as soon as possible and get as much as you can out of the system with your first few attempts through that mini game, is to go check out some of the awesome guides that have been created by members of the Lost Ark creator program. There's a ton of great guides on YouTube that talk you through the system, give you advice on the most efficient ways to play the system, to play through Transcendence and power up your gear. Uh, there's going to be seven levels of Transcendence, so this is definitely a system that you're going to be interacting with an absolute ton. So that is honestly the best advice I can give you, and good luck as you clear Thamine and work to power up your gear with this new system. Now that we've talked through all things Thamine and Transcendence, let's get into the other content that's coming with this update. And there's a ton. First off, we're going to have the Veskal Guardian Raid. It's a new 1630 Guardian Raid releasing alongside Thamine. Um, and to give a little bit of another lore intro on Veskal, long ago, Veskal chose to be consumed by chaos, following the footsteps of Varkin. Veskal is a chaos guardian who hunts enemies by using sound waves. And after returning to Arcasia by crossing over from another dimension, he's ready to find and hunt his prey mercilessly. He needs to be stopped before his angry screech overwhelms Arcasia. Just like other Guardians, you're going to be able to clear once a day. Uh, and at 1630, you're going to be getting increased rewards, chance to receive higher level Fate Embers, and a chance to earn the Purification Level 1 Legendary Galewind Rune. There's also four new achievements and a title uh, added alongside Veskal. And there's a new Veskal card that has been added, which can be obtained in the Legion Raid, Chaos Dungeons. Uh, along with the card, a new card book effect called Not a Bird has been added to the card set list. Uh, you're also going to be able to do special expeditions for Veskal if you like to send dispatches out from your stronghold to clear your Guardian Raids. Uh, so that's all been added, and you're going to be able to find Veskal in the Purification Guardian Level 1, 
We've also added the recommended skills and other things like that, like you normally would see for a Guardian raid. Uh, just two weeks ago, I finally got my first 50,000 gold Fate Ember drop from a Gargadeth Guardian raid. So I'm super excited to check out Veskal and see if I can drop some of those even bigger Fate Ember uh, from that. See if we can get the max gold. Gonna, gonna need it as I progress a bunch of characters through the Transcendent system. Alongside the Veskal coming in at 1630 as a new Guardian raid, there's also gonna be a new 1630 Chaos Dungeon and a 1630 item level difficulty added to Chaos Gates. So you're gonna be able to get increased rewards on any of your characters that are leveled up that far across Guardian Raids, Chaos Dungeons, and Chaos Gates. So prepare to power up. Nope, that was way too cheesy. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. That was, that was I hated myself for saying that. You should probably just leave all of this in. This is, I, I'm tempted to just leave that in. Do it, do it. But yeah, anyway, ton of cool new stuff coming in. Uh, with a ton of increased rewards. Should be a fun couple days, especially if you've saved up some rest bonus for those. Next up, let's talk through some store updates. We're gonna have two new cosmetic collections joining us uh, in this month. We know uh, players weren't too happy about only having the Arc Pass skins last month, but we're layering in two new collections, so hopefully there's something exciting in there for everybody at this point. Um, the first one of these is going to be the Lunar Eclipse Collection. Some cutting edge Arcasian fashion. Let's take a look at those cosmetics. And then the other cosmetic collection arriving is the Promise and Blessing collection. When this released in Korea, it didn't have outfits for all of the new classes that have been added to the game. So there's gonna be some new cosmetics added to fill in that collection across all classes. Also, this is gonna be an evergreen collection, so it's gonna be available in the store for longer than you know, some of the special collections like the Lunar Eclipse skins. Um, this one's more focused on dressing your best for formal Arcasian occasions. And let's take a look at what you can uh, expect from that collection. All right, let's talk through some event updates. So daily playtime rewards are actually gonna continue through May 15th, and we've added a honing support selection chest to the 90 minute reward, alongside the rare to legendary card pack that players kind of you know come to expect in those. So a little bit of extra you know value coming in. I'm sure, there's gonna be a lot of people that are hitting that, you know, as uh, Thaymine Prague happens this week. Um, Next up, the Grand Prix is actually gonna continue, but we've made uh, a slight adjustment to the reward table. We've added in special cooking powder uh, to the event shop for players to create feasts in their strongholds. Uh, may your bellies be full of confidence and buff providing food as you challenge Thaymine in his dark fortress. I know a lot of players were hoping to get event feasts again. It's a nice little you know, attack power buff or movement speed buff and we hope it will help you as you, uh, you know, look to vanquish Thaymine. Um, next up, there's gonna be new Fever Time events and the daily login reward track has been, you know, kind of refreshed as well. All right, next let's talk through uh, a kind of new 
change that's going to happen to the currency exchange. Uh, so we know there's a ton of players who purchase Royal Crystals and want to have faster access to the gold when exchanging Royal Crystals for gold in the currency exchange. While the three-day withheld gold has helped combat fraud in RMT, our, our teams have been working to evolve the system to address some of those player concerns. So we're rolling out a new system. The currency exchange will now have two types of Royal Crystals, safe Royal Crystals and restricted Royal Crystals. Safe Royal Crystals, uh, players can purchase gold that has no three-day hold with restrictions. And then for restricted Royal Crystals, uh, it will be kind of that same system where there's a three-day uh, withheld restriction on those. Um, the amount of safe versus restricted crystals that you receive is going to be determined by trusted status and some other behind the scenes factors that will help kind of create a credit score for players in the game. Uh, please note, this is just going to be a new feature and is subject to change. Players might see some changes to their credit score that might seem unexpected as the system is updated and iterated upon. Um, you know, we look forward to player feedback and appreciate your patience as we work to roll out the system. Hopefully it's, you know, something that works well for players that want that faster access while still providing some of those safeguards that we've had in place. Um, as always, if you have feedback, please let us know. One of the best places to do that is in the official Lost Ark Discord. All right, next up, let's talk through, uh, kind of in a similar vein, some gold changes to the Kakul Sadon Legion Raid. So the gold earned from Kakul Sadon Legion Raid is going to be reduced along with the prices to receive extra rewards. The total gold reward is reduced from 4,500 to 3,000 gold and the extra reward price has been reduced from 3,100 to 1,500 gold. So while it is a gold nerf if you're still playing Clown, the nice thing is is that the gold that you net, if you're buying all the rewards because you are, you know, trying to hone up and move your characters through the end game progression, you're actually going to be receiving a hundred more gold if you're if you have been purchasing all those boxes. Um, I think this also pairs well nicely with the fact that you don't need gold to hone up to 1490 anymore. So hopefully this change isn't as impactful as Clown kind of moves out of the main focus of the Lost Ark Endgame with the introduction of Thaymine. All right, next up, let's talk about balance updates. Uh, we have a, a pretty substantial balance patch coming in uh, compared to the one last month. I think it's coming in at a great time for players to be able to use some of these balance updates as they fight Thaymine because it's all good things. There's no nerfs to any classes in this uh, patch, so we're not going to have to go through the standard buff nerf like we kind of do in some of these patch notes videos. It's all good things. Uh, first off, I'm going to talk through some of the classes that have had defense and health updates. Uh, for all the specific numbers, on all these changes and you know what's really changing with your class. If you hear your class mentioned, go check it out in the full release notes. There's gonna be all the specific numbers, specific changes. You're gonna be able to find it there. For this, we're just gonna give you kind of the quick rundown of what has changed. So let's kick things off first with that, those health and defense coefficients. They have changed from the, for the following classes. So Summoner has had an HP buff. Arcanist has had an HP buff. Bard, has had an HP buff as well. Sorceress has had an HP buff. Deadeye had a PVE and PVP defense increase. Um, Artillerist had a PVE and PVP defense increase. Sharpshooter had an HP increase. Machinist had a PVE and PVP defense increase. Gunslinger had a PVE and PVP defense increase. Shadowhunter had a PvE and PvP defense increase. Reaper had a PvE and PvP defense increase. Soul Eater also had a PvE and PvP defense increase. And Artist had an HP increase. Aromancer had a PvE defense and PvP defense increase. And that is it for all of the HP and defense increases. Now let's talk through uh, the class balance changes. Um, so Berserker got a slight buff, Destroyer got a slight buff, Glavier got a slight buff but in the form of utility. It got kind of a stagger buff to a lot of the red skills. 
Um, Artillerist received a slight buff, but mages were actually the biggest winners in this patch, with Sorceress, Arcanist, and Summoner getting some pretty substantial buffs and changes. If you have one of those classes that you play consistently, I would highly recommend checking out the balance section for, for those classes, because there's some, some pretty good changes coming that will hopefully be super helpful as you go up against the biggest and baddest Legion commander that you mind. That wraps up this episode of Patch Notes with Henry. Um, just want to leave you with a community question as we end the video. If you watched the Thamine Creator Roundtable that we did, uh, you probably saw us talk through how long we thought it was going to take us to clear Thamine. So for the community question this time, I was really, uh, really curious to know how long you think it will take you and your raid group to clear Thamine. Uh, let us know in the comments. Looking forward to seeing if you think you can clear it fast or you're expecting a difficult fight ahead. Let us know. And as always, like, subscribe. Uh, it's really helpful as we, you know, try and improve or make changes and just, you know, work on a video series for you, the community. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, as always, I'll see you in Arcasia.